In this example, we have another closed current loop subjected to an external magnetic field. However, in this case, one of the segments, in this case the segment that's along the y-axis at x equals 0 and z equals 0, this one, that is hinged, and so that's fixed in place. The other parallel segment is free to rotate. Okay, so let's see what the magnitude and direction of the torque is, right? Or rather, the magnitude of torque and the direction of rotation for this loop. So we have a couple vectors to draw here. So if things get a little hairy, um, please bear with me. So let's see. Let's determine the magnetic force on each of these four segments, top, down, I'll say outside and inside segments. For the top one, right, right there, using the right-hand rule, remember that whoops, magnetic force is I L cross B. For the top, pointer in the direction of the current, so out, middle finger in the direction of B, thus we have a magnetic force up which doesn't do any rotation. It kind of just wants to pull this up, but I guess it's fixed along the XZ plane as well. So that doesn't rotate it. Similarly, there's a force downwards, also does not rotate it. Okay, let me just draw that as an arrow. On the outside face, the current is going down. So right-hand rule, I, B, there's a current or sorry, there's a force, I'll draw it uh, parallel to the z-axis, or as close as I can, like that. And on the inside face, there's a force conversely towards the back. Okay. All right. So it turns out that there's only one force doing the rotating right there. Okay. So thus there is a net torque. So there will be some um, the rotation and angular acceleration if you wanted to find that. We're just finding the magnitude of torque, okay? So torque, remember, is equal to the magnetic dipole moment crossed with the magnetic field. You can also write that as I times the area vector crossed with the magnetic field. So the area vector is interesting because there are actually two, right? There's an area vector, well, going from the face this direction in the plus z direction. There's also kind of an area vector going from the face in the minus z direction. Which one is correct? Well, the rotation will take it this direction, right? It'll take it clockwise if you're looking down on the xz axis. So choose the area vector in that direction, right there. Okay, so we'll write that as trying to go along the z axis A. Okay, all right, so let's rewrite our torque as part A. The magnitude now, whoops, is, uh, okay. Let's try it again. I, there we go, times A times B. What's the angle in between the area vector and the magnetic field? Interesting. We have to find that out. It's not necessarily 90 or 0 in this case. It's some general angle. They tell us 30, but is that really the angle in between A and B? Let's take a look. I'm going to redraw this down below. So again, we have a right, well, actually not again because I haven't mentioned it yet. We have a right-handed coordinate system. We know it's a right-handed coordinate system because using your right hand, you can point your index finger in the X axis, middle finger in Y, and your thumb points in Z. And we kind of have this. Whoops, that's not in the, there we go. I'm going to try and go there like that. 
something like that. So the angle theta is right there. That's the angle in between the actual loop, the loop face, and the x-axis. And so that's 30 degrees. The area vector actually points in the z direction. So like that. The magnetic field, which is in green, that's in the plus x direction. So what's the angle in, in between those? Well, I'm going to, I guess I sh should have drawn that a little differently. Let me kind of draw a top-down view of, of that diagram. In that case, we have the x-axis there and the z-axis, kind of like that, right? Y then is towards us. And so our loop kind of is like that. This is our 30 degree angle given. And now A is perpendicular to the area face. And so if I were to extend this back to meet the x-axis, this is the direction of the magnetic field. Right? We see that over there. And so the angle in between those two is this angle right there. A and B. A and B. And so that angle is, right there, that angle is 30 plus 90, because that's a right angle. And so that is 120. You may have noticed by now that it doesn't have just one loop around this rectangular loop, right? There's actually 180 closely wrapped turns, which is why I know it just says two, but imagine that there are 180 loops, right? All connected with the current traveling the same direction. So we need to multiply this torque, which was just for one loop, times 180, right? So we need to see, well, what that is. It should be larger. In fact, it will be larger. So we have 180 times our current value of 1.2 times our area. This is a rectangular loop system, all the same dimension. So A and B, we have 0.4 times 0.3. And the magnetic field magnitude of 0.39 Tesla, sine 120. And after all that, we should get 8.75 Newton meters, right? And remember, that's Newton meters for torque, not a joule, right? Torque is not measured in joules. That's just for energy. It's, it's a whole other digression, but just Newton meters, right? The direction we've already specified was kind of clockwise around the y-axis. So clockwise about positive y. There you go.